All right. Uh, for this news series, generally, I want to bring up a specific article, uh, or at least a specific event. Uh, but in this one, I'm going to be trying to cover something which has been going on right now in general. Um, I, but I think if I pointed out any specific protests, I would create unnecessary tension, I guess is the way, best way to say it. Um, I could bring up protests which um, spit in the face, as it were, of what I'm about to talk about. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't think those are actually the majority. Uh, so I'm going to talk about what I see going on as the average for protests nowadays. Uh, so just understand that usually, at least I think, I mean, to be fair, this is the second episode in the series and the first one with an actual topic, so so I can't totally say what the series is going to be like, but I don't think that I'm going to do this often where I don't actually bring up a direct example or a direct article um, or a podcast or a TV show or something like that. Um, because uh, it's only because I think if I did actually do that, uh, I would only create tension. And there's I don't actually think there's anything I can point to other than protests, protests recently. Uh, and actually, if you decide to research this yourself, I don't recommend looking up any per, any particular controversial protest. What I recommend is you do what I'm currently about to do for this video and just look up uh, protests on Wikipedia uh, into the category of it. I believe it is here it is. List of international protest movements. Um, it gives three protests in this case. The Occupy Movement, the Black Lives Matter, and Ferguson Unrest protests. Uh, Occupy, by the way, starting in 2011. Uh, Black Lives Matter starting in 2013. And protests against Donald Trump being the third one uh, in starting in 2015. Uh, I am... Not in t not because they're against Donald Trump, but I will be talking about pretty much the ones against Donald Trump only because those seem to be the most recently, mo the most recently, all the most recent ideas for how to protest have been surrounded in this one. Uh, to give an example, the Occupy movement basically just goes to a place and makes sure that people know they're there and then pretty much stay there. Not any individual, I think, but what they do is they get so many people to stay for like a week at a time that they can pretty succinctly say, yeah, there's been 20,000 people protesting in this park in New York for five months now. Uh, and that's uh, that was their original intention. And that is, I think, a moderate level of acceptability um, or even a good idea. But I think that the problem comes in with the next stage, uh, which is the Black Lives Matter protests. Again, not because of what they're actually protesting, but because their methodology to these protests uh, shifted. They saw that the, black, that the, uh, that the uh, Occupy movement were, wasn't really effective. Uh, I mean, it was... It, got, it was effective in the beginning, and even for the first few months, but as time went on, it just became a part of life. So what they wanted to do, I think, in their methodology, although, to be fair, it, I think it's a little harder to draw intelligent conclusions from this protest, try to understand that what I'm saying here has nothing to do with the actual politics of the protest, just the idea about how to protest, uh, and how they actually go about doing it. So, in the Occupy movement, it's more about being, having an obvious presence, but in the Black Lives Matter movement, I think it's more about, or uh, protests, well, minor movement. I, I, I'm not really sure where I want to draw the line for movements, but since movements also count as things like the Communist Revolution in Russia, uh, Although that was a revolution, it was a movement until it actually, uh, it was a movement until it actually waged war against the country which it 
well, movements are attempts, I think, to change the current system. Revolutions are attempts to make a different system. Um, but all revolutions have to start as movements. Uh, so I don't want to underplay what a movement is. Uh, and I don't think these are revolutionary. So, but anyways, I'll call them movements, but understand that I mean it in the lightest sense. These have no intention of ever actually replacing the government in which they protest. Um, but they're not just one-offs either. Um, so in the, in the Black Lives Matter movements, so starting in 2013, um, the idea was to really make a point, uh, but the problem was they couldn't figure out a really good way to do it. Uh, so I don't know if it was intelligence behind what was creating these things, but they seemed to create riots. Uh, what they would do is they would wait until an unfortunate event happens, and I don't mean unfortunate in the case of, like, accidental. Plenty of these cases were obvious situations of criminal neglect in the very least on the part of the heads of the police departments of different areas. Uh, I don't, I think that's the most neutral way I can say that. Uh, but setting the different uh, ideas aside, I think that in those cases, certainly the, I think you think of the police chief. The police chief, especially after the first few protests, knows that people don't like what's been happening. Uh, they know that uh, what people are willing to riot about these kind of things, and they know that there's a legitimate possibility that they're, uh, that they're, the police underneath their control or under their control may create a situation for these kind of protests. And so in that situation, that person, that police chief, uh, and thankfully many did, has to say, okay, how do I prevent this? And if it, I can't prevent it, how do I respond effectively to pre prevent these protests? Uh, without actually just going and vilifying every police uh, officer who has anything to do with it, uh, because there might be legitimate misunderstandings. So, thankfully, many of them did that, and even more thankfully, this didn't actually happen a whole lot. There was just a couple of very obvious key cases. The problem was with these protests that the response was pretty much find something which makes people very angry and incite a riot. And thankfully, that wasn't actually carried over. If that was carried over, we'd have a lot of problems. In the very least, it would have become somewhat illegal, I think, to hold certain opinions, or at least to act upon those opinions in public. It's the kind of thing where, you know, you get the American Nazi Party kind of thing, uh, where you'd get, even if it had popular support, the American Nazi Party can't actually act on the views it has, without breaking the law. So it's the same with why I think the Black Lives Matter movement, if not Black Lives Matter the organization, although I know they've had their own problems, uh, has been more or less decredited as, as time goes on because their methods seem to be, revolve around more or less illegal behavior. The problem is their methods haven't totally gone away, nor have the methods of Occupy. Uh, the Occupy movement, I think, comes from a legitimate standpoint, uh, especially because that was more that sta that movement. Uh, in the beginning, it actually had some legitimate points that it was trying to push through. Although eventually, it became all that stuff were more or less poor against the rich, uh, which is inevitably doomed to fail. Not because uh, not because there aren't more of the poor than there are of the rich, but because the rich aren't inherently uh, bad. There's always going to be a 1%. They don't have to be quite so rich as they are here, but then they could also be 10 times richer by comparison. You can look to some third world countries where they have, uh, where the comparison between bottom 1% and top 1% is astronomical. It's the difference between three cents to your name and $3 billion. Uh, it's not quite that intense here, but the, so, um, the the problem with them is that they eventually got too vague, uh, and also their movement was doomed to 
it inevitably get less effective as time went on. Uh, they had a sort of golden period about three months in. I think th this is my view on them. I might be wrong. But I think they sort of had a golden period about three months into the Occupy protest. And people realized that, yeah, they're just going to like stay protesting for th several months. Even though, before they started realizing that they actually aren't, they're just going to do have a whole bunch of intake and outtake, and there's maybe a core 1,000 in each out of every 20,000. You know, so one out of every 100 people at the protests and one out of every 20 people camping out at these parks is actually a dire hardcore, going to stay with this for the long haul sort of person. Um, so the problem is when you adapt that mentality to... Uh, when you graft it on to the mentality of the Black Lives Matter protests, it creates a lot of problematic issue. A lot of problematic protests, I think. The Black Lives Matter protests had more to do with, okay, we're going to make people notice us, and then we're going to be done. The Occupy movement said, we're not actually going to do anything actively to disturb anything, but we think by our commitment, people will notice us. And that was true enough. Um, and still is. I think there's still some kind of Occupy movement going on somewhere. Um, there's your little proof it's not stock footage. Um, no, actually, for all you know, that could have been pre-recorded. So I'm going to throw two more rocks, a smaller one and a bigger one. I don't know if you'll be able to tell. Here we are. And it'll drop now. There it is. And another one. And it's currently dropping. There it is. Um, all right. So... I don't know why I always need to prove that it's not stock footage. In this case, it's just because uh, I'm sitting right where I'm sitting, where the camera is actually recording. There's a fence uh, leading to this odd little river. You'd think it would need to be fenced off, but I guess it does. Um, so I just like throwing rocks into it. See if I can get it over the fence without throwing it into the trees above. Anyways, um, so in the case of the Occupy movement protests, they were pretty much just saying, like, our commitment will prove our point. And it kind of did for the first couple months. That three-month period after the first free, three months when people realized, yeah, they're actually committed to this. Uh, after that, it got too vague and it got... But anyways, it started out, it had a pretty solid period when they were actually making policy, policy changes around these protests. The problem is, and then, of course, the... Black Lives Matter protests never actually, I think, got anything effective done other than making everybody notice them for a very, very much for a very short time. So what they did is they made it very clear, uh, they made a couple of points very clear, and that's it. Everybody noticed those points, everybody knew about those things, and then they were done. Uh, Occupy movement can say more because they show their commitment to those ideas, but they don't have as much power to actually get those things done. But the Black Lives Matter protests could get a lot of stuff done, but they couldn't say as much because they were saying it through the voices of a thousand angry people riding in the streets who the next morning would totally regret what they did. Um, or at least most of them. So, at least I think they would. I'm, then again, I'm coming from the perspective of most people are pretty much rational which might be a mistake on my part, um, or at least they're reasonable. But uh, So this all correlates in these most recent protests. The 2015, well, starting in 2015, uh, really taking off in 2016, and then there's been a couple of them in 2016, or in 2017, I mean, uh, protests against Donald Trump is what Wikipedia calls it. Uh, I think it's more liberal versus conservative protests because there has been a conservative response. So I think so. I think it's a, li a little more than before. Before, the Black Lives Matter th protests were about what they saw as unjust behavior on the pr uh, from the perspective of, uh, or from the uh, standpoint of law enforcement, who has to be by their nature objective, uh, and and uh, the. Uh, well, the Occupy movement was from the perspective of poor against the rich, but not necessarily conservative against the liberal uh, or liberal against the conservative. But it was more about uh, every poor person, no matter what 
political side they're on, uh, thinks that there are these sorts of issues, and we're the ones who are going to protest about it. These newer protests are very partisan, as as is shown by our politics, which has, even though the parties haven't changed, the uh, the how little they pretend to they've as time has gone on they've tried less and less to actually represent the people who didn't vote for them in their own districts i don't think we're totally there yet where where uh people only represent the people who voted for them but it's a lot closer now um and the idea of course is that uh even if you, even if a candidate wins by 30 percent uh meaning they got 30 percent of the votes they should still represent 100% as best they can. Uh, but they're, they're going to represent it in a way which 30% agreed with. Of course, we're very far from that point, uh, but that's what it is. Now, the rock coming. Um, so, it's really great because on the camera, this looks like really bright, but uh, I was worried about that because it's actually kind of dark and gloomy in there. But my camera seems to think like it's a bright, sunny day outside, even though it's actually like 8 o'clock right now. Um, so... Uh, the 2015 protests have taken a piece of both of those previous two protests. Uh, they took the, we need to do something fast to make a point from Black Lives Matter, but they also took the, uh, we're going to be committed to this and we're going to have a more long-term commitment uh, to what we're doing. So rather than whatever we're doing, it's going to happen through the crowd and a whole bunch of people basically running around. Uh, there, these new protests take place in the, uh, instead of as a riot or instead of as a whole bunch of, well, hippies camping around talking about how the world sucks, uh, not to diss on the uh, Occupy movement, but, it, you know, the fundamental uh, people who are willing to stay in a camp, uh, on a park in New York for two years are those people. Uh, who are used to it anyways. Um, but, uh, the, but, the, I also, you know, not to diss hippies either. I know a lot of hippie-ish folk, uh, even though I think most of the, like, actual 60s, uh, commune hippies are, like, 80 now, so I'm talking about more the, those hippies' kids. Uh, but, anyways, the, uh, the thing is... This new movement, its methods are, I think, bad. Uh, and this is really the point I want to make, even though I'm 17 minutes in. Um, and that's that these, these newest protests have gotten so far away from the original point that I just can't understand it anymore. I can understand it with the previous two movements. The Occupy movement was doing, and what, by, what I mean by original protests and traditional protests is the ones that were the most effective, at least in my mind, which is the 60s. You got the civil rights era protests, uh, which were the most effective, and I'm going to talk about at least why I think that was in a second. Um, but, and I, uh, I can understand the Occupy movement because they're, they were doing something very similar to those movements. They're basically just taking up a, uh, a place, and instead of like the civil rights movement where they would take it up for a certain amount of time and be very public about that. Uh, for instance, everybody uh, sitting in a park bench area where it's supposed to be whites only or something like that. Um, is So they're taking from that, and I can understand it, they're being a little less effective about it, but that's just because their, uh, their gripes are less direct. Uh, this is a fundamental problem which, which hurts us every day, but doesn't, but on no particular occasion does this kill us, is what it is. It makes it harder to be alive because you're poor because of these reasons, but it doesn't actually kill us on any day. If we do die from these reasons, it's over a period of months. So we want this fixed, but we're willing to wait for it. Um, the Occup or the Black Lives Matter movement was a little more direct, another rock coming. Um, but they were, they were riots. You've seen riots all over the place, and they generally come from, people are going to die from this and die from this very quickly. We just want that to stop. 
so we're just going to be angry about this, break into some stores that had nothing to do with this, and be done with it. And that's fine. I get it. That's People are angry. We want something to be done. We don't know who to say to get it done. And even if we did, we, did, we wouldn't think they'd actually get, go through it with it. Um, so then you've got another, the, these newest protests, which are really problematic because they are protesting from the perspective of, uh, of, well, what they're doing is more or less they're going into the streets and just blocking off roads, uh, which is more, it more or less says, notice me, notice what I say, but I can understand how they think that would be effective. But the reason I think that the civil rights era protests were so effective is because they really got to the point of it. They really hit onto people's moral values, their basic moral values. What they would do is they would go, a whole bunch of black and white people, and every race would go and sit in some park that was whites only. Uh, of course, they would have to have a blacks and coloreds and all that parks as well. But that park was, you know, it was a dirt patch in the corner um, as to where the nice green lawn uh, with watered uh, stuff and like a playground and benches and all that uh, for the whites park. Um, so uh, those protests were effective because all they were doing was sitting in a park and the response would be to get acid thrown in their face. They'd get these people screaming at them and they had a Gandhi-like just don't respond. We're just going to sit here. We're not going to say anything. We're just going to sit here as people sitting in a park as we are, have the right to do. And what would people do to them? They would scream in their face. They would bring a cup of acid and throw it in someone's face for daring to sit on a public bench while not being the right skin color. So that really got to the heart. So even people who disagreed with their movement saw like, this is no kind of response. If I was right, uh, if my side was right in this issue, we would be the ones who were responding in a moral fashion. They would be the monsters. Uh, and that's, I think, why the Black Lives Matter movement didn't work out, because they were the monsters. They were saying, there is a problem, and it's a race-based problem, so what are we going to do? We're going to go break the law and riot. Uh, and that's another rock coming. Um, and that's a problem. These modern protests, I, I, I'm not, I understand the Black Lives Matter protests. Like I said, they're just riots. Riots have always happened. Um, and I understand why they didn't work out. But I don't understand these... Cur I also understand the Occupy movement because they had a more uphill battle to go through. Uh, and they did it more or less effectively. Um, but I don't understand these current protests because they have issues which they could actually protest. But the way they would protest these things is, well, one issue was transgenderism. They can't, uh, so what they could do, for instance, is find some uh, pastor or something like that willing to have gay people get married, even if at that time it wasn't legally allowed. So what they, would, what they could do as one example of a protest is just see that there was some sort of chain of weddings that were highly reported on for a week. So that pastor would, if not legally, he would under God, he would uh, marry 2,000 people in a week. Do something crazy like that, but have them lined up so that they could make a point. Like, this is a thing, and it's actually going to happen, and we can actually do it. That would be an effective protest, because that would people would see it, and they're just like, they're just getting married. What's wrong with that? Um, of course, we've gotten past that issue, kind of. Um, but... It's uh, one issue I know that a lot of people had problems with was the transgender bathrooms thing. Uh, or the, yeah. So one thing they could do is just, like, prove the stu... What they need to do is prove the stupidity of it and you have a major response to the negative. So what they could do is just go and organize protests, say, New York City... Well, that would probably be a really uphill battle, but choose some... Like, choose Queens or something like that. Get a... get. 20,000 people together and and have 20,000 people stand in all of the bathrooms in New York, in Brooklyn or, or in Queens or something like that. All the public restrooms for a day. Just, just majorly screw things up, but in like a funny manner. Like, oh, you've got to go home before you can go to the bathroom. Uh, or even let people in to use the bathroom. 
uh, but make sure that men had to go in the women's bathroom and women had to go in the men's bathroom. Something like that, that it doesn't actually create any real problems, but it's a legitimate protest. Especially if, and in both of those protests, the best thing that could happen is that some politician could, for the first example, could come out and say, oh, that's not a real marriage, they're not really married, because that just proves their point. It's stupid, why are you preventing them from doing this obviously easy thing? Uh, and in the second case, they could come and arrest people, which they would inevitably do if you did something like Brooklyn uh, or Queens, where there's so many people, so many cops, there's most likely to be at least a couple thousand arrests on like a misdemeanor offense or something like that. So none of your protesters are really injured, but on the other hand, you're proving your point. Um, so that's a really great way, I think, to protest, but they weren't doing that. They weren't making a point. Obviously, what they were doing is they would get 30 people together. They're going to stand shoulder to shoulder or arm to arm uh, and block off a street. So, like, buses and cars can't go by it. All that says is, look at us. We're being stupid. If cops arrest them, it's because they're actually breaking the law and they're preventing people from doing stuff for no particular reason. It just says, notice us. It doesn't say look at this easy, silly thing, like with the bathroom thing. That would just say, like, look at this. It doesn't matter what bathroom go you go to. It's about pooping. Who cares? Uh, or with the marriage thing. It's, it's marriage. Everybody has a right to marriage. Those are two issues which they were, pro which at the different times they have protested, uh, and I understand that. Even things like boycotts, I can understand. Uh, even if they wanted to do things uh, uh, like mass movements, but like the Occupy movement, but on a lighter scale. Like I think one thing that got a lot of mixed messages from a lot of people was the Women's March, which I think got like 30 million people or something like that. It was some crazy number, but it's believable when you remember that's like a tenth of America. Uh, so it's completely understandable that a tenth of America would at some point, even if only for an hour, go march on the streets for some amount of time, but, uh, or not even march on the streets, they pre-planned that sucker, so it was really just like, walk on this pre-organized area, there's food vendors all around, so really it's a parade, but it's about a political topic, which is very vague. I think they kept it to like, women are, women deserve equal rights, I think is what they stuck to with that, or at least that was the given message. So, you know, I can understand that, that especially even for very specific issues, although you, they'd have to understand they wouldn't get quite so many uh, rock coming, uh, quite so many people to come. And that would be something like, yeah, let's get 20,000 people together. We're going to go march down the sidewalk, not the street. Uh, or if you are going to go down the street, take up one lane so people can go around you. Uh, of, you know, if you're going to have 20,000 people, at some point people are going to walk in the streets. So either pick a side street or walk down, like, or leave it so that cars can still go around you even if they're slowed down. Um, so then what you do is you get a whole bunch of people and they just walk through the streets. And if anyone asks, why are you walking through the streets with so many people? You just make sure that everyone knows it's like, it, it's because we support gay marriage. It's because we do this, we do that. Uh, we support this, we support that. We think bathrooms shouldn't be specific. It's a place to poop and nothing else. Rock coming. Um, I don't think that's quite as effective, but I think it does show, look at this. We have 20,000 people with us, and that's maybe a tenth of who is willing to come uh, or of who actually supports us. No, it's probably more like a 50th. So politicians in their mind are going to be multiplying whoever came by 50 and realizing like, okay, yeah, maybe I actually should at least become neutral rather than totally against this issue, rock coming. Um, but they weren't. They were being s silly about it. So anyways, I wanted to make this video uh, because, uh, because I don't think that... I think that protesting can be extremely effective. But, I, you, but thus far... I usually don't side with protesters, not because I agree or disagree particularly with their issues or the issues that they're protesting, but because they're going about it in a very dumb way. They're going about it in a way which is more self-defeating than anything, especially some of these more recent protests uh, where all they're doing is preventing even the people who agree with them, but not completely, 
from doing anything. Uh, I really, I'm trying to avoid specific examples, but I think I can get away with a specific example if I don't actually say what it is. So I'll say this: one of the mo one of the more recent campus protests. Uh, which really doesn't say any specific thing, even if you look up the ones this year, and I don't know if it was this year. I, I think it was. But even if you look up campus protests this year, you're going to get 50 things. Um, and that's just the ones that were actually reported on. Uh, even little, I'm sure every little community college gets its own protests every two or three years, and there's probably 100,000 of them in our, co in our country, uh, or in countries. Uh, you don't know what country I'm in. You still don't. Uh, well, I guess there's greenery, so you can kind of knock out the one in the far north. Uh, and there's, w and it's not a million degrees, so you can knock out the one in the far south. And my accent gives away the continent. So you can guess, but I'm not going to give it away. Um, but uh, the thing is, if you look up that protest, you'll see that there was a lot of stuff like there were in that in one of the more recent protests, there was a whole bunch of people arguing at this one, yelling at this one professor because he objected to I forgot what it was. It was some sort of thing. Uh, actually, I remember it was that there was a day where uh, African American students would just not show up. Uh, I forgot why it started, but anyway, it was like a it, it was a senior ditch day, but for college. It's the kind of thing where, like, yeah, okay, it proves a little point, it proves solidarity to, go, to a cause, and, it, and really, it's a day that professors know not many people are going to show up uh, anyway, that, or at least a lot of people won't show up, so they're not really going to plan anything too important, or if they do, it'll be able to be made up later or online. Um, so it's one of those days, it's pre-planned, it's everything in there, uh, so it's great. The, pro uh, the problem was that there was a proposal to switch it so that white students didn't show so that white students were, uh, I think they were going to be banned from showing up or something like that. Or it was going to be a black students only day. And there was this one professor who, as far as I understand it, is pretty much a very, one of the most liberal professors in, on that campus, uh, who was saying, like, no, that's about exclusion. That's about, uh, we want it to be about inclusion. Uh, not showing up is a free choice, and since, especially since white students as well and other races, students are completely also willing, uh, able to choose to not show up on that day, to, choose solidar to show solidarity, even if that's not specifically the point that they don't show up. Um, but so he, pro so he was against this, uh, no, uh, no whites are allowed on this day, uh, switching of the norm for that college, uh, or of the annual thing for that college, rock incoming. Um, but he got massive protests for that. People were very angry at him. And of course, I can understand that to a certain extent. Uh, and of course, that's an easily solved thing. You get like a day of protesting, and then he explains like, no, I'm actually with you guys, I just don't think you're handling this properly. But it didn't happen. He actually tried to do that a couple of times, as I understand it, but the problem is, there these new protesters, these 2015 anti-Trump protesters, as Wikipedia puts it, although, again, I don't think that's the real issue. Um, these protesters are really... Oh, I, I'm done saying rocks incoming. There's just a lot of rocks incoming. Um, I'm just throwing rocks at this point. It's getting dark, and I want to get rid of my cash. Um, so he tried to explain. like He tried to say, like, no, I agree with you, but I just don't think you're handling it properly. Uh, the problem was they're taking the tact of, if they disagree with us, do not let them talk. Um, and you've seen this a little bit, like the more loud, I guess I could say, a little more obvious uh, political activist for one side or another. I know one of them is, I don't know his name, he's the English guy with the uh, bleached yellow hair. Uh, Milo? Mino? And his name is like, why... Uh, it's, he has like a 30 letter last name uh, and he is bleach hair and I know he's very conservative uh, but I think he's also gay I, it's one of those things where I think he got popular because he's a good example that they can that even the conservative side can have people who agree with them uh, even though by all suggestion they should completely agree with the opposite side it, it's a good example people like to rally behind people like that uh, for good or bad uh, sort of like when, uh, well, 
sort of like when in the anti-civil rights movement or the anti-women to vote movements, how occasionally you'd get some, albeit a very minor amount, but, and, well, you'd get a very minor amount of women who said, like, I don't want to have the right to vote. Uh, I know a lot of people tend to say, like, oh, they didn't understand what they were talking about. Uh, they were being coerced. Maybe, but honestly, I think it's better to not underestimate what they were doing. They were doing it for their own reasons, but they would get a tiny amount, and then they would be way over uh, reported on by the other side, uh, who would say, like, look, these people who should, these people, if all women think this, then why are these women saying they agree with us? Um, so, so, anyways, people like to rally behind that kind of thing, and this Milo guy was one of them. And I know that a lot of times in the last couple of years, when he was uh, offered by conservative groups to come and talk to uh, different universities, they more or less protested their ways into pretty much forbidding it uh, in public spaces, and I know people had their problems with that. I've, I sort of, for a while, I sort of viewed it as extended consumerism, uh, more or less, if people don't want it to happen, they won't pay for it. In this case, if people don't want it to happen, they won't see it happen, uh, not on their campus. They weren't actually preventing that conservative group to then just do it the same to do the same thing, but like 15 feet away uh, on some non-campus location. Uh, they just didn't want it to happen on their campus, which is still suppressing the first uh, the freedom of speech, I think. But it was a little closer to acceptable, uh, just because they were saying not here, not on this campus, which is not completely bad. Uh, but the problem is, in this most recent protest, they were entirely suppressing this professor. So as a result, it had gone on for like 10 days or something like that before anyone actually started to realize like, oh no, this professor is actually our best friend. He's the best guy to talk to. He agrees with us. The only difference is he's like 70 and he's been through a lot of it, so he knows the best ways to do this. He's not going to go uh, picketing on the street because he knows the best way to prove his point. Um, and he didn't think this day was one of them. Um, and of course, it, it was even worse because uh, the protest in question was actually handled very incompetently. Uh, when they had actually, like, they actually sat down with the, uh, I remember hearing that they sat down with the, uh, yeah, I actually watched a video about it. They sat down with the, like, president of the college and uh, he tried to ask him, like, what do you want? And they got, like, a room full of 50 people with 50 agendas saying 50 things. Um, or saying a hundred things. Um, and then on top of that, it was even worse because on top of their shouting in the face, their chant so nobody other than us can be heard, they were also, they also did, I remember, he, yeah, I saw it in the video, like apparently the guy had some pretty bad claustrophobia and the room was packed. It was like 200 people. Um, so, so you got people who, so they were not letting him go calm down for a second. He was, I think he was pretty much asking for a safe space, which these people, I, or at least a year ago, they were protesting for having these things on college campuses. So, I'm, well, so they were, so this protest in particular was very self-defeating. Um, but it, that's, that protest is really what made me think of this video, because it, it just made me think of the civil rights protest where they were able to, even the people who, their most staunch opponents to their civil rights agenda, were still looking at these issues, these people having acid thrown in their face for sitting on a park bench and saying, like, you know what? I still don't agree with you, but I don't think that my side is doing this well. I think that you guys are the more moral, you guys have the moral high ground on this issue, and maybe I should consider your standpoint. These protests nowadays, I think, are just pushing people away, because they see these protesters, and they're like, well, look at what they're saying, and they're, they're just preventing anyone from, if they disagree with a speaker, they don't let them talk. If they disagree with someone who's trying to respond to questions and complaints, they don't let them talk. 
Then if someone has a mental or physical disability, in the case of the, uh, in the, case of the claustrophobia and the uh, president of the college, they don't let them, they force them into their power situation. They force them into the room, which was making the president very uncomfortable. Um, so that's, it's pushing people away. It's doing the exact opposite, as far as I can tell, from the civil rights protests. So, yeah, all right, this, well, 40 minutes, but hey, you know what? I'm glad. It's the first time in a while which I've made a video which is more than, which is out of the 16 to 24 minute mark. Uh, and it's good to be able to talk about these things for a long time, especially since I don't actually feel like I rambled that much. Uh, I might have been a tiny amount redundant, but I feel like I made my point, uh, even if I made it three times. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, again, I want to preface in the, in this series, most of the time, I'm, I think at least most of the time, I'm pretty much gonna like say, here's this article. I read this article. If you want to, you can pause this video right now, go read it, and then unpause the video ideally and watch the whole thing. Uh, and then uh, you can hear my view on this, and then you can put in the comment section, like, this is what I thought. And if, if by the way, people actually do that, I will do my best to at least respond in the comments. Uh, although there is few enough people right now who are willing to uh, respond to these videos that I would probably make a video about it. So, you know, there's that to look forward to if you actually like make the comment. Um, but who knows by the, maybe by the time this up, this gets uploaded in like 60 days, I think that's the uptake on my current thing. Since I haven't made, as long as I make a video about every three days, the backlog should be about 60 days, which seems like a lot. But as soon as I start making a video every two weeks, uh, it's going to seem like nothing because it's going to start shrinking. Um, but yeah, um, in this next uh, couple episodes of this series, I do plan on I plan on uh, having a article to talk to uh, talk about or a podcast or something like that that you can access for free. Um, something where I can say, this is what I thought about this, this is what they said, this is what I think an opponent might say, this is what uh, I think someone who disagrees with me but also listen to this might say, uh, and I'll go through it like that. But in this case, I, other than that one protest, I don't think I can talk about these things without getting way too controversial and without getting people to disagree with me on principle. Um, and the only reason I think I could talk about that protest is even without naming it is because I spent 30 minutes before it or whatever, 25 or something like that, prefacing, this is why I think this, and this is in comparison to even protests which were happening two years ago, um, like the Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, so that's that. I thought I should uh, explain it as best I could and in the future how it'll be. So yeah, enjoy the, well, generalized outro. Enjoy it though.